I'm back in business. It's Thursday morning here. We're ready to uh, start some two-tone work now. Before I tie the uh, strands on, I'm going to have to make up a, uh, a keeper. Now I like to make my keepers nice and wide. You can always trim this off later on. And the reason I like to make it nice and wide like this, I'll show you in a sec. Put it down on nothing. This, so that when they're folded over like that, and that's how it's going to go on the end of the whip like that, right. you can fold that back in there like so, and you've got a bit of double strength there as well. So as well as that keeper there, you've got this keeper here, and it's doubled over as well. And I'll do the same for the uh, the keepers on the on the handle. Um, this here, I'll just thin that out a little bit. Look, the way the way I do my stock whips is the way I do my stock whips. This may not necessarily be the way. That you want to do your stock whips, you'll just have to find your sort of find your own way. But I found that this yeah, gives me the most consistent sort of whip. Like I say, a lot of a lot of, a lot of people who make whips mightn't agree with me. That's their prerogative. Trimmed off a little bit more there, making this up as we go. I'm just going to tie this on. Once that's plated over, it's never going to come out. Let's trim this one off a bit shorter. So we don't have everything stopping at once. Yeah. See, so there's not a great deal of difference between there and there now. I'll measure that. That's 10.32 and that's 13.7. There's a swell, but there's not a big swell. It's a nice gradual taper from there to there and then back down all the way to the bottom of the whip. Now I'm going to tie on the uh, the blue strands. Now if I'm honest, I, I just I did this before. 
Of course, I forgot to tie this cable on. So, let's take it off. Should do a thing of outtakes. We would have to censor the language. The string I'm using here is, is called uh, flat wax lace. Now the people I originally get this stuff got this stuff off are in the US. But I'm afraid they've gone their business. So look I don't know where you get this now. Tie these on back up here. Like I said, we'll do the, uh, the spiral method. I'll do a bit of Put a fancy plating down this down this thong. Try it on nice and tight. part of this is getting the spacing right between the, the strands. You can see what it's like here with 12 strands. Imagine what it's like with when you're doing a 64 cut with. And you've got 32 of the little beggars there. It's easier to uh, to work out the spacing because I only got I only have to leave enough room for three. I'll make sure that's around the right way. My old eyes are. No, it's got to have a bit of a twist in it. That way, it's easier to work out the spacing as you're going down. See, I'm two, twisting that around there like that. I'll do that for about four inches and I'll tie that off. And the reason I do that is that's about as far as you can go and then still be able to pull up the uh, pull up the strands and make them nice and tight. See, that's coming out done there. with me playing around with it. Now these are only temporary ties because as we plait back when we get to one of these ties we'll undo the tie and I'll just tighten this up again.
speak of it. Now the other three, I'll bring them down. And what I'll do is when I um, do the fancy planning on this, I'll work my way back from here, back up to the, uh, the keeper. And the reason I do that is because that way I'm only pulling through about two feet of strand. Whereas if I went down that way, I'll be pulling through six feet of strand. So that makes it a lot easier to do it this way. Keep this all nice and tight because you're not working on a solid base. It'll loosen up quite easily. Tie that off again behind where I've just tied it because if I leave that in there like that, when I finally undo it, it's going to be very hard to get this out from underneath here. And it'll leave loose lace. So I'll tie this off here. And tight. A lot of playing around with this, but you get a pretty satisfactory result and a unique result. I'll take it off now. off and now I'll just pull these up tight and then we'll spiral again. Yeah, it's nice and tight. Now to test how tight that is, all you've got to do is get it, get your uh, thumb like this and just twist it back the other way. And if there's no big gaps in there, well you know it's nice and tight. And by the time I weave, interweave the other one, the other strands in, it's going to be even tighter. So that, that will turn out as tight as it would if you plaited it. And that's the way it should be. Alright, I'm just going to, I'll just wind another four inches on. Alright, there's another four inches done and uh, I'll just tighten that up. And I'll do another four inches. I'll bring, bring it out to about a foot. Because the patterns have got to be all the same on all the whips. Uh, foot, foot. Yes, I'll bring it down, bring it down to about there. You can see that's nice and tight. It's going to be actually quite difficult to get strands in under there. I'll do the next section. All, right, all the tying on is done now. Um, I've got a little bit over a foot. What the hell? Now, introduce the uh, the black thongs. I 
to start them off um, under one over one. That way gives me a nice uh, tight fit there so that when I go into the herringbone plat it's just nice and tight. You know what nice tight plating and they all, all of a sudden have a nice, uh, have a, a loose spot. Now to find the length of these, run it out, just wrap it around there in the spiral. Bit more. And once you've got one thumb the right length, you can then measure your other ones up to it. A couple inches more just to be sure. There'll be nothing worse than getting up to up to the uh, up near the keeper and find out you're an inch short. There we go. There's that. one in and just run it out to the same length as the other one. Now I'll do that with the whole six strands. As you can see it's pretty tight. The more you put in, the tighter it's going to get. This this first part here, I'll do a diamond plate under one over one for about oh, three or four, so there's a nice tight little pattern there. Uh, and then I'll just go straight into the um, the fancy plating. Now I'm not going to show you what I, uh, what I do here because there's a uh, a video up on fancy plating, so you can re you can refer to that. And there's also a video up showing how I work out my patterns, so you, you can refer to that. The one other thing that I meant to say about this. Uh, this string that I use, this uh, flat lace. Google waxed flat lace and you should find some somewhere but if you can't uh, waxed synthetic um, oh god I can't think of it. I'll think of it later. Brain's gone numb. Sinew. Wax synthetic sinew will do the trick, but the flat lace is better because it, it tends to flatten out more, especially when you're uh, when you're doing binding and, and tying things on. So I'll just go ahead now and uh, do the patterns on this, and then we'll start again when I've done the patterns. You can have a look at that, and uh, we'll go from there. Right, now we've finished um, doing the fancy plating. I don't think you can see it too well there because I haven't rolled it yet. So I'll show it to you in a bit more detail later. Can you hear that tap dancing in the background there? That's me. Are you kidding? Doing a tech dance. Anyway, what we'll do now Fun and frivolity is over. Get back to business. What we'll do now is to tie this off. And how I do that to secure it, under here, along here I've done under one over one for uh, you know an inch or so, and that will make sure that that's nice and tight. 
I pull these all these strands up nice and tight. Now I get a um, a harness, well, a harness needle. Now you can get these from Tandy stores or even if you just got a big sewing needle and the uh, and the wax lace. Just make sure you can see all this. I got through there. Now to secure it, just put it back through itself like so. And again. Pull it over like that. Pull it like that. And now you're, you're secure. Now here. Where are we? I'll zoom this in. Press the wrong button. Godfather. You can see that there. I'm going to punch straight through there. With an awl. Sharp, very sharp awl. I put the thread through there like that. You might need a pair of pliers just to get that in there. There you go. That's pretty clear. I'm doing this now, and this will lock all this in place. Now, again, get the thumb out of the way. There. Punch it straight through. Where are we? Now I'll move out a bit now. and tight and again find one that you haven't, haven't gone through punch it through Now that'll hold all these strands in place. One more. I have them done. You can get these oils or uh, from Tandy again. Tandy leather stores are a, a good source of tools and uh, and bits and bobs. They most probably have the artificial sinew as well. That should hold all those strands in place. I'll never come adrift. And now we'll just put that on there like that. And what we're doing here is just forming a base for a small knot that we'll put there, which will hide all that. I need a bit. Like I said before, this is not the way everybody does their whips, but off the stock whips. But I found for two tone, the 
this is the best way of doing it. Now we'll just lock that, that off. We're going through there. You will need a pair of pliers for this. Because that's fairly tight now. And again, through and then just slip it underneath there a few times like so and it's not going to come adrift that off. I'll undo this. strains off here. Alright, that's good. Yep. Cut them all flush. See all this. All right. So now, later on, when we finish the the whole thong, we'll roll this, and then. Um, Put a little, a little knot there, and that will hide that there. Nobody be any the wiser. Now we're going to start the uh, the herringbone plait down here. When I set up, we'll get onto that. Right now, I'll put this in the. In the vice, I play from the vice now, I don't do a lot of standing up. After, uh, after about 35 years standing up, I think. My legs started to give out, so I sit down now. I'm old and comfortable. Now I'll just tie a bit of string in behind this where I'm going to, where I finish the plating. Just to hold it all in place while I go into this herring bone. Otherwise it's like a little fly apart. Or if I make a mistake it'll all come undone. This is an old woodworker's working boss. that a friend of mine was going to throw out. Um, you're worth a small fortune if you're trying to buy one. I've had this for about... Oh, gee, 20 years now. 
what I've done is put some wood in on the insert there and and some leather on ins on the inside of that. And I've drilled some grooves in here too as well so that the whips sit in a sort of a round channel. You can hear the wind outside, but it's quite windy and quite cold here this morning. I think it's the last day of summer. And it's letting us know. Right, now what we're doing here is going from an under one over one pattern, a diamond pattern, to an under three over three. So we've got all these strands here. This is only a 12 plat. So we'll go over this one. Watch carefully now. Under this one. This one here will take over three. And this one here will take over three. And I'll get down a bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Down a bit. A bit closer still. Okay. Like I said, two middle ones there, over, this one over there, that's over one, this one here, over three, because you can see that one there comes out over that blue one, so this is the next sequence to go there, like so. Now from back here, on this side, you see that? We'll go over three here, like so. Right. Now from the back around the around the back here, we've got six the six blue strands here now. There's the next, that's, that's the next blue, uh, black strand to be worked there. There's a blue strand just there. So we're going over one, under two, and over three. Right. On this side, We're just going to go under three and over three, I think. Yep. And now we're into our over three, under three sequence. I hope. Yep, that looks pretty right to me. Okay. Just untangle all this. Stuff here. When you're plating like this, the key to stop it getting too tangled is to pull it through often. Otherwise, you get a tangled mess. And now it's just a straight sequence of under three over three. Might be a good idea to pull these up tight first. They are tight, but we'll pull them up tighter.
these strands I've left fairly dry, and the, the reason there's there's a before that is there's a fair bit in the uh, in the belly for a start. But the other reason is that if I put too much grease on these strands, I think as you saw at the beginning of the thong, the blue is going to go nearly black. I don't want that. So now sequence is under three over three. Until we get to a point where it's crowding up too much. And then we'll drop two strands. Pull them up tight. There's no such thing as plating too tight. If it's nice and even and tight, it's good. Alright, I'll just carry on here now until it's time to drop two strands. Oh. We've been recording, but I didn't really know it. Okay. We'll listen to Ray Stevens. Turn that down a bit. Now, got to the stage where we're uh, going to drop two, two strands. You can see here it's starting to get a bit crowded. We're at 28 inches on this now. So we've managed to do 28 inches in uh, in 12 flat. Which means we've got a pretty good uh, taper on these strands. You can see here they, they're starting to crowd up. I'll just move that back a bit. There we go. Now, two strands. I've got one short one here somewhere, black one. The easiest way is just to drop them in the front. And then we've got an under three over two sequence on both sides. And we won't have that for long either because uh, the way these, this whip's tapering down now it won't be long enough we go from 12 to 10 we'll be going from 10 to 8. All right. There's the short strand. Pull him up tight and just tuck him in underneath there. Corresponding strand on the other side because they're all the same length on the other side it doesn't matter. And then just carry on plaiting. I'll give you a bit of a close up on that. Yeah. 
see there's a short there's a short strand like I said pull it up tight and hold it in there with your finger go to the other side pull it up tight tuck it under this is the next strand to be worked just hold all these things together underneath there with your finger if you can't do that tie them on with a thin bit of cotton and now the sequence is under 3 over 2 and just plait over the strands that are in, in the centre or have we got a twisted strand get back to you in a minute I've got a twisted strand so I have to undo this Right, reading on that, we're back to the under, two, under three over two sequence. Now put over the strands that are in the centre. See this, the two strands that we just dropped? Close up again. There's that one. And that one there. Oh, where are we? That one there. So just gently pull, see that? Don't pull too hard, otherwise you'll make it look skew with. Same with that one. Put it up nice and tight. Okay. Keep plaiting. Under three over two. Alright, now we'll cut these two strands off. And I'll go in a bit. Make sure you don't cut the wrong ones off. There's about two or three inches there. Save that. Perfect. Alright, now I'll carry on until we're ready to uh, drop down to the last eight. I think I might have had the camera on when I sh should have had it off and off when I should have had it on. Um, just, just in case I didn't have it on when I should have had it on. show you uh, how I pull the strands up. Um, bear with me. I'll show you what I mean. The two strands we've dropped. That one. And 
that they would have been and that one. Before I pull them up tight, they would have been standing up a bit proud, like so. Okay. So, just tug them into place. You can see that move there. Not too tight, otherwise you'll make it skew with. And tug that one into place. There you go. See that? Make that just a little bit, but I'll... You can sort that out later on. Focus a bit here now, I'm getting a bit carried away. We can sort that out a bit better later on too when we uh, we roll the whip. There you go. Now look what I had on the video before this I don't know. And uh, I'm not going to waste any hour looking through it, trying to find what I did wrong. You'll just have to have it as it comes. And we're doing number three over two again. I'll do this until we're ready to uh, drop down to date and I'll come back and hopefully I'll get it right this time does anybody anybody remember this Rowdy Yates Clint Eastwood Rawhide Bring back memories. Glad you're going to be able to remember this. All right, we're ready to uh, to go on eight plat. Now the simplest way to do this is to just turn the whole thing over. And what we're doing here now is going under three over two on both sides. And if we turn the whole thing over. This is the easiest way, and the neatest way too. Just undo that a bit. Don't be frightened of this sort of thing. And now we've got a sequence of under two over three. Right. So with that sequence we go under two over three. Under two over three. I'll tighten those up. And now we can drop two strands from the front and then that will give us a sequence of under two over two which will be the final sequence we want uh, in an eight plat. So if we drop this strand and say this strand I'm using, by the way, I'm using somebody else's camera at the moment too. The other one's just about carked it. So I'll have to start looking around for a new one. But in the meantime, I've borrowed one. Now,
again. Hang on, I'll zoom in a bit. Zoom in on all those strands that I've just dropped in. Which is that one. And that one I think. We'll soon find out. And if I pull that up, see that tightens up. And that's the other one. Pull him up. And they're nice and tight now. Just keep on plating. Now I'll just do this eight plat now until we come to the end. I'll drop these, I'll cut these strands off in a, in a few inches. So far we've, I've done uh, 35 inches of this whip, so I've got a foot to go. That's just working out nicely. I'll snip these strands off here. And I'll continue on with 8 plate until I get right to the end where I'll do an under one over one sequence. I'll come back then. Right, now we're at the end of the, the plating, four feet now. When you're at the end here like this, I'm just going to go under one over one. But I like to, uh, to grease the strands pretty well. If you lose the colour, well it's just bad. Bad luck, but these, these have to be very tight. Otherwise, uh, like the uh, like where the uh, where the keeper is, which gets a lot of wear, this also gets a lot of wear because the uh, the foil is going to attach on the end here, and uh, it bends. And gets whacked on the ground and all sorts of things. The good thing about plating a device like this is that it keeps your uh, your plating nice and straight. Yeah. Okay. Now just go straight into the into the two. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, straight into an under one over one, under one over one pattern. There. Under, over, under, and over the middle. Put one of those pesky blowflies in here. Under, over, under, and over. Do that for about an inch and a half, two inches. A lot of people just go with a herringbone right to the end. And you'll find after a while if you do that, no matter how tight you pull them up, they will loosen. You end up with loose strands at the end there, and loose strands eventually break. We don't want that. And you can see, I made these strands seven foot long. If I had made them six foot long, I would have been caught short. And I wouldn't have been a happy chappy. 
So you're better off making them a bit longer. Possibly wasting a few bits of uh, a few inches of leather. It saves you a lot of trouble in the long run. Should do that. Tighten all those up. Now I'm going to cut a fall. I've got a video up there on how to cut your falls. I was going to put a kangaroo white fall on this, but I think I've changed my mind and I will now put a thin red eyed fall on here. I'll go and cut that back in a second. Right, time to put the fall on. Like I said before, the fall on this is only a small fall, 18 inches. Zoom in, zoom in. Just slip your. Uh, there's a video on this anyway, on how to do this. Just slip your fall back. Start with pick a strand and start with it. I'll just start with the back one here. For those of you who don't want to uh, go and check that video out, I'll get it a bit closer. Where are we? Going too far. Let's go over, around the back, through a tail loop. of a twist pull it up snug there you go remember that pull it up snug I'll just stop this now because we're starting to fast run out of tape just to uh, to finish the knot off Take your last strand, take a fit, peg it up, there's the last strand there, over the last strand, peg it up, I don't know, three or four, five, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with, point the end of this strand, peg it back up through there. Pull these others up tight now.
I've done something wrong here. But I'll fix this. Once, once you've, uh, like I say, I'm running out of tape. Um, once you've tightened these up, just pull that back down through there. It'll be tight. And as you pull it down, it'll tighten up more. I'll just go back and fix this. Then I'll roll the whip and I'll show you the knot that I'm going to put on the other end. All right, I'll put a new tape in anyway, so we're, we're not going to uh, run out of tape. I'll upload all this tonight. Just do this little knot. And it's just going to be a... little 4x Turk's head. It's the same as the uh, as the knot that I show how to do in one of the videos there. And instead of going around six times, you go around four times. See how this goes, I might even be able to go around six times. Do a little pineapple knot. No, it's only going to go four times. Leave a bit of space in between there. What we'll do is do the four bites. Just refer to the knot on that video. And if you didn't catch it before, I said I said that you can download these videos. So you're not on the internet all the time. Just download them. There are, are a heap of programs about for free. Just. Google, I don't know, Google download YouTube movies. You'll find a few programs around. And uh, you can download them, put them on your computer, watch them from your computer, or put them on DVD and take them up to your shed. I use Firefox as a browser, and that has an add in, again, free. And whenever you uh, get a movie that uh, that is downloadable, and which which are which are most of them, and I think all of them on YouTube are, it lights up. And if you want to download it, away you go. Now there's a, we're back to the start of the knot now. That's four bytes. Like I said, refer to that. Um, six byte Turks head knot. Now all we're going to do now is follow this around, follow the strands around. And by the way the, the strand that I'm using is one of the the offcuts from the strands that we straightened up before. I got quite a few good strands off those. All at two millimeters wide. Which I'll use for uh, wristbands, little knots like this. Now I, I will won't show you uh, how I make up the base for the handle of this stock whip because that's another video that's already up there. So it's a bit of a waste of resources really. My biggest problem here is with our internet because we're way out in the bush we have to rely on either satellite or uh, wireless. We're on wireless. So you don't get a great deal of uh, data here in Australia. One of my uh, accounts, I only get 15 gigabytes a month. That's upload and download. And that costs me uh, $79. And then another one I get, I've got, I get 18 gigabytes a month. That's upload and download. And that cost me 80 something dollars a month. So I've got two accounts going. But I'll tell you what, 
what's that? 15, 18, 25, 30, 33 gigabytes. Doesn't go very far. One of these movies on average, one of these videos on average is about 1.5 gigabytes upload. Anyway, the government's promised us a uh, a brand new internet service called the NBN, and it's only going to cost us thirty-three billion dollars. It's not much, is it? Thirty-three billion dollars. And then hopefully, we'll still only get wireless, but it'll be a lot cheaper and we'll get a lot more data allowance. Now if I can get enough data allowance, I might even think about uh, putting a webcam up. Think about it, mind you. You can catch me live. Nearly there. Getting tight. That's it. That's the knot finished. I've rolled this, by the way, the whip. Done that already. So this has effectively finished this tutorial on how to do a uh, stock whip thong. And if you can do a four foot, you can do a six foot, eight foot, whatever. If you can do a twelve plat, you can or an 8 plate, if you can do a 4 plate, you can do a 64 plate. Key is practice, practice, practice. And patience. Lots of practice and lots of patience. I'm just going to tuck that bit up underneath there. Use this for, for fine work. I'll just poke a hole down through there. Down through there. through there. Get a tag up. Cut that off there. Tuck that under there. Oh, and just a um, uh, a thing on on knots. A lot of people seem to think that you shouldn't grease your strands when you're doing your knots because they slip. Well, I'm a, of the opposite thought. I grease all my strands for knots. Not too heavy. But I've never had a problem. I've never had anything slip. Do them tight. Make sure your foundation is good. Alright, now I'll set this up and you can see. Yeah, there's the finished product. I don't know if it'll come up on this. 
Anyway, that's it. That's that's the whip. Gosh. I'll show you the camera set up. Oop. Yep. Got bits of wire joined up here. That's hanging off the that's hanging off the ceiling up above the bench. And I monitor what I do on the tie on the TV screen. So it's a bit of a jury rig, but it works. So there you go. I thought about a, a helmet cam, but I don't think I'd bother doing that. I might turn into Noddy. All right, now there's your. Uh, that's it. That's the tutorial finished on the uh, stock whip thong. Any questions you have, you know what to do. Email me or put it on the uh, on YouTube. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, what else? That's about it, I think. I'll do the handle. I'll show you the finished handle and I'll show you the, the finished whip. And I'll show you that at the beginning of the next tutorial I do, which will be on how to make a bull whip with all plaited bellies, uh, which is the way that I make them now. I'm just about to uh, make a bull whip for a customer, an 8 foot 16 plait, so I'll do the bellies and show you how that's all done. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, video and keep those donations coming. They're very handy. I'm looking around for a, a good uh, video camera now and hopefully that will last me as long as the previous one has. Talk at you later.